Very good evening. Mr. Kiran Reju, Honorable Minister of State for Home Affairs, Government of India, General Marwa, uh, Mrs. Ghosh, esteemed members of the MAIT, industry partners, media persons. Uh, I am extremely happy to be part of this uh, release ceremony. It's uh, timely, I must say, because uh, Digital India Initiative of the Government of India is really pushing it to the point from where we can leverage the, the technology to the levels which will bring all sections of our society to a level where we can say, yes, we are really inclusive. Our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, when he launched this program, it was basically to take care of what has been missing. And uh, despite the fact that we have a huge uh, technology growth over the last 67 years, if you start counting from the space to defense to atomic energy to various other sectors like pharmaceuticals and all, it is a tremendous growth. And the opportunity today is that uh, this growth has also resulted into a, few, uh, a, a good amount of economic uh, growth. You have year on year uh, our GDP rising to 6 to 8 percent and we have been doing very well. So from developed or underdeveloped nation, changing over to a developing nation status, I think this is a good journey that has happened. But as everybody has said in the past, and I just like to reiterate that this journey is incomplete because there's a darker side or there's a side which is uh, alarming and that side also has to be taken care of. Probably the vehicle of Digital India and many other programs that the government of India has initiated are in that direction. For example, when we talk of uh, butter the tax sites, a few examples, many of you may be knowing, 300 million people live in all rural India. 833 people live in villages. Contribution of agriculture is only about 14 to 15 percent. For, despite the fact that we have food stocks of more than 216 million tons, we have hungry farmers. We have 42 percent of our children under five, which are under malnourished. Infant mortality is 44 by thousand, probably the highest. We have a high speed of urbanization taking place, people coming to cities for employment, which is not really equipped for giving that. The rate is almost 30 people per minute are leaving every day. And by 2050, probably we'll have a huge population, probably 50% of India's population will live in the cities. And uh, as far as the electricity is concerned, you have almost 300 million people who don't have electricity even today. In terms of our innovation, in terms of our what we call as the Global Innovation Index, we are sitting at 76 out of 143 countries. Now, if that is the case, then certainly we have to look at the trajectory which we have followed so far as far as the science and technology or the direction in which the technology has been moving and providing relief to and how inclusive it is, all that we have to look at. And uh, I'm surprised that uh, what our Prime Minister said once upon a time that, look, this is the time when the technology has to come out of the national laboratories, academic institutions, also from the industry and to provide succor in various areas with the global technology growth which is taking place in terms of food security, in terms of healthcare, in terms of biotechnology solutions and so on. He said this, uh, in 2009 or 2010, if I don't remember exactly the date, but yes, the world is changing, so we should also harness all the technological growth which are taking place. He talked of national laboratories, national <coughs> academic institutions, so on. Yes, we are getting technology. We have grown into technology, but unfortunately, these technologies have not come out of the national laboratories or the national industries or the national academic institutions. In unfortunately or fortunately, because somebody may look at it from the point of view, yes, we have technology irrespective of from which source it came. But ultimately, it is a technology which is coming from 
the multinationals have brought. It is not only coming in terms of technology, it is being processed and operated and maintained by such institutions. I will leave it to the judgment of the people present here. Is it the right approach or is it the wrong approach? Is it sustainable? Is it going to make you really uh, independent of uh, the kind of vagaries of the international trade that can lead to? Does it bring wealth to the nation and does it really flow to the bottom of the pyramid? Somebody said that this technology is growing and there is a very fine feature of us like by name pre scooter who said the nine technologies, disruptive technologies which are going to make change and those are as most of you know big data and IoT and ICT what I just mentioned is the underlying framework of all this that is going to transform. I just heard two excellent presentations where the importance of ICT and IoT related to that was highlighted. Friends, the, it's important that we have a network because I have worked in defense, General Marwa is here. We talked of uh, revolution and military affairs and we talked of networks and software, I think late 80s or early 90s. Realizing the importance of what communication and internet technologies can do because it's all flew from DARPA into the military and then from military to the civilian sector. All militaries have been able to today create an infrastructure which is supporting the NCW. The same thing if you want to do in the case of whether it is the disaster management or it is the distribution of, uh, of services to our citizens, make the system human-centric from the computer-centric, requires a huge infrastructure. So Digital India Initiative certainly needs to be taken to those levels where this infrastructure can support all what we are talking about. If you see the economic value of this, it is tremendous. Whether it is health sector or it is, it is the education sector or it is biotechnology or agriculture or any of them, certainly ICT can make a lot of difference where you can transform the work and empower people with that. But <coughs> It would certainly require tremendous amount of mission mode approach for setting up this. Now, how do we do that? The fact remains that today, I think when somebody, uh, I think the previous presentation was there when we said, we have gone from internet to internet of people. And internet of people required networks. Now, when we go to internet of things, it requires cyber physical systems. And when you have to approach cyber physical systems, the domain of your technology changes drastically. Merely even giving internet facilities to millions of people, which is certainly a question mark even today. Because when I visit villages, I find a large number of fiber optic lines being laid, but there are no cell phone towers to provide the internet facility. Because the, the commercial value or the value for the service provider is not good enough. So as a result, it remains an unconnected OFC. Now that kind of a situation will prevail unless we take the last mile connectivity issue in its totality. Same thing comes in terms of other systems. If you are going to have disaster management in which you have large number of sensors doing surveillance, whether they are earthquake sensors, they are flood sensors, or they are sensors with respect to weather or with respect to anything, or even for that purpose if you are going to do tomorrow health systems or education systems which are going to require these cyber physical systems. The technology will demand development of these sciences, otherwise it will be so prohibitively costly that probably affordability will become a major issue tomorrow. And that is where I am requesting the industry to take a change from what it is today in terms of Indian industry particularly, depending upon the entire technology segment coming from the outside with value addition taking place in the manufacturing of the gadgets which will support ICT, whether it is for IoT or it is for disaster management or it is for education or healthcare, it needs to really take a look what is the percentage of value addition we are doing. I find right from the cell phone which we take, which is the least value addition, anything between 5 to maybe 12 percent to 16 percent, 
to even consumer durables which are going to be used in large numbers when you have cyber physical systems where it is not more than 24 percent and overall we say that we are going to have a trade in these areas of electronics going to almost 400 billion dollars by 2025 or so the industry is not pitching more than 5 to 15 percent then what is that gain as far as the nation is going to happen are you creating wealth or are you distributing wealth that you have to decide distribution of wealth does not make you rich creation of wealth <coughs> makes you rich it improves your gdp so we have to take a serious look and if you have to take a serious look the trajectory has to change we can't repeat situations that our foreign direct investment philosophy which and which requires that 30 to 40 percent has to be uh, indigenous can be relaxed for A or B or C and then you can have 100 percent for X number of years. That kind of thing cannot be permitted. I am not against FDI. I am for it. But collaboration should be such that it should be like the Maruti kind of or the Suzuki kind of a collaboration which happened in 1885 where the complete ecosystem grew up as far as the automobiles were concerned. I am not seeing that happening in the digital sector. I am not seeing that happening in the electronic sector. And if you want to have digital India as a major issue, then certainly we need to accelerate the process of manufacturing in India, designing in India, innovating in India. And one thing I would like to mention about innovation, there's a lot of talk we talk about innovation. But if you are talking about IoT, IoT cannot remain purely on the app level of innovation. IoT has to go into engineering innovation. If you don't do engineering innovation, again, you will have a serious problem as far as the technology is concerned. So the shift from the service sector based innovation to engineering based innovation is a must. China has done a great job by bringing major investment in the engineering based innovations by government participation and the industry working together. I do not see why we are not in a position to manufacture all the products which we are using today. Are we uh, is the industry in this country so poor that they cannot spend money on setting up manufacturing facilities for the usual products which are needed for the digital India, whether it's a laptop or it is a, it is a setup box or it, is a, uh, or it is a digital meter, whatever it is. On the other hand, we say that we should set up a foundry which will make man, uh, chips which will be used. Do you know what is the percentage of chips which we are manufacturing and uh, which we are importing? Barely nothing. Most of you import not chips. You import the products like the cards. You product maybe the whole kit. So when what what is the foundry going to do? What is it going to feed? So such issues need to be addressed, and that can happen only if the industry makes a change, and that change supported by the policies on electronics, particularly the PMA, the MC of the IT, have to be tweaked further to enable all of you to spend. Not only for the government, PMA should be allowed, it should be allowed globally. Because if America can say, by America is the requirement, why can't they say, by India is the requirement for us? And in that case, we need to say that if there is an Indian product which is cost and quality competitive, then imported product will have a duty higher by about 10% to 15%. Let's give that kind of a tax structure which will make sure that the Indian product is also done. These few things are very important. I won't extend you beyond that because I have attended a uh, large number of seminars, conferences in the last three years on digital India. I have given convocation addresses. But friends, the answer lies not just in policies but in implementation. And implementation has to be in mission mode, in a focused manner right up to the village level and it cannot be remaining only in the premises of Delhi. Thank you very much. God bless you. Hi, I'm Padmanabh. I'm Sam. My name is Tsuneo Murata. My name is Yutong Huang. And you are watching. You are watching. You are watching ELA Times TV.